Hi and welcome to another video. Um, I know it's been a long time. I'm not going to make any excuses. Uh, it was it was his fault. And um, with the latest news on Onshape and Fusion 360 license and changing, I thought I'd best make some kind of video and just acknowledge what's going on. So just in case you didn't realise, Onshape, the browser-based CAD software that used to be free, that then wasn't free anymore, um, has now been consumed by PTC. That's the massive organisation that owns uh, the, the likes of Pro Engineer or Creo or, or whatever the hell they call it these days. So who knows what's going to happen with the licensing for that, whether it's going to disappear altogether, whether it's going to become some kind of subscription service or whatever. At the, at the same time, Autodesk decided to uh, throw a whole new bunch of licensing out for Fusion 360. So I used to use an entrepreneur um startup kind of enthusiast license and when i logged into fusion today i was <laughs> presented with a message that said you can no longer use this license you have to choose another one and going through i can now choose a personal not for commercial use like i'm reading that off the top of the screen not for commercial use license i guess that means i'm not going to get any ad revenue off this video or any video ever fair enough so what i want to do because Fusion 360 looks so different as well, I am, I'm going to do a series of videos where we just go through the different menus in Fusion, we concentrate on some of the commands, we model something simple, and we get more and more complicated with the modeling as we go through. Hopefully there'll be time to cover things like sheet metal stuff and cam stuff in the future. We'll see how, see how it goes. But yeah, I just wanted to share this with, with everybody out there because Fusion now looks totally different. Onshape is pretty much dead, really. You know, that's gone away. So I don't know if it's coming back. Um, so yeah, Fusion 360 is the tool we can use now for free, allegedly. And uh, at the time of recording, who knows what's going to happen? So let's just jump straight into Fusion and see what the hell they've done with the menus. Okay, let's go. So here we are in Fusion 360, and as you can see at the top of the screen, it says personal, not for commercial use. Thanks, Autodesk. At least I've got access to software, I guess. Um, it is, you are right, it is 20 past 11 at night on the 26th of the 10th, 2019, as, as decrypted by the time. And yeah, it's pretty late, <laughs> but I'm going to make this video anyway. So um, you'll probably notice that these icons have now changed across the top of the screen here. Um, for some reason, we now also have these um, these sub menus, which are a little weird. Uh, yeah, it's a bit strange. There used to be like a make button, right there, there. It's not there anymore. You've got to go tools and then make to 3D print stuff. I don't know if there's a way to drag these like buttons around, or you can customize those. I haven't figured that out yet. And um, I've noticed we've got rectangular pattern here, but if we drop down create, because these are all drop down menus as well, handy, um, we can go into pattern and we've got circular pattern there, but I can't drag circular pattern up on. So yeah, th there's something going on. There must be a way to, to modify this, but this is what we've got now. So you've got surfacing, you've got sheet metal, and you've got tools. Now we're just gonna li literally look at solids. You probably remember from my last series where we did 2D to 3D CAD. Disclaimer on that series. Uh, yeah, um, Dassault Systems have decided to withdraw DraftSite as being a free product as well. Handy. So it looks like if you don't want to uh, to have to buy software, then Fusion for this personal non-commercial use license is what you're going to do. But what we're going to do is we're going to start literally from the beginning. We've got nothing on the screen and we're going to create a sketch. So this button here... Although it's underneath the word solid, which is a bit weird, it says create sketch. When you click it, you get these three weird kind of like things on the screen. They're just your planes. Basically, it's a piece of paper. If you imagine looking at something, you've got the front, you've got the top, and you've got the right or the side. Um, and you can just click on one of these planes and draw on it. So we're going to click the front, I believe that is. If, if you expand this option here, you can see we've got X, Y, Z, X, Y, Z, y z e, yeah that's just, just names of the planes it doesn't matter which one you draw on we're just going to draw on it <clears throat> and as you can see now the uh, the menu has we, we've now got the the sketch menu along here um yeah it, all the other menus are still there but we've now got sketch that's just appeared e excellent 
and we can use the rectangle tool it's a two point rectangle tool you click and click click just group select and press delete the circle the circle tool is click the center and drag out to click the uh, the diameter or radius and of course you can drop down and you can do a two point circle which is a bit different so all of these tools are literally there to help us draw some stuff and if you don't know what tangency is or if you don't know what radius or diameters are then you're going to struggle basically because you know when you're doing curves you need tangency most of the time when you're doing sizes you need to know the radius or diameter of something again most of the time it's very difficult to wing it um as it's almost um <clears throat> excuse me as it's almost halloween what what i propose we do is we create something that we can 3d print that we can like put up at our window so what i'm going to try and do is i'm going to try and create a witch's hat okay so as you can imagine like the last tutorial series it was lines and circles so witch's hat has some lines and some circles in it so i'm going to start off just by lashing in some lines now i'm not going to be bothered about the dimensions at this point <clears throat> I will try not to die while making the video. <clears throat> Dear me. I'm not bothered about, about dimensions. This is all about just sketching stuff right now. So a witch's hat, it has like a pointy thing. If you ever hear me press the keyboard, I'm just pressing escape so that I can click line again. You can probably do some like right click jiggery pokery. <sighs> Who knows? I'm just used to pressing escape. <clears throat> and then when we get these points, we can just drag them around a bit. Uh, we can make something that's a bit bit pointy there right so I'm gonna do this that's probably gonna go up um, if it starts like locking the things it's because the constraints are turned on we'll talk about them later all I want to really do right now is just draw something in and show you how um, let's just say the bottom of the witch's hat is gonna be something no that's no good it needs to be some kind of curve so we'll use a spline click 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 oh, man click 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 and then right click and say okay for some reason you've got to do that and then you can drag the spline around i probably want them to be splines as well but <clears throat> this is the design process so we go click 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 no no that's not right uh click 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 up oh. The spline tool is really annoying because it's one of the only ones that I've found where you've got to right click and say okay to finish it. Um, can I make that end and that end the same? And you can see now we've got this weird pointiness going on. This is where tangency comes in because these two curves are literally just joined at a, at a point. Which we might want, we might not want. Let's put another curve in over here and it's going to dink, 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 dink. And then we'll go okay. And you can see by that curve that the tangent is going a different way. So if we do that and then we start dragging stuff about to make like, the bottom shape, it's a little bit horrible. So what we can do is we can click that and press shift and click that. And then we've got this button here that says tangent. And if we make a tangent, what you'll see happens is if I zoom right in, what it's now done is it's changed the way that this curve is here so that these lines are now straight. There's no kind of like if I if I if I drag that. You can see there's no point there anymore. The point has disappeared. Like here, we've got the point again. But at this point, it's disappeared. Over here, we've got the point again. So we click, hold down, shift, and click, and press tangent. It does bonkers things where the tangency goes backwards, which is always handy. Thanks for that. And what we can do is we should be able to use these controls here to change the tan. As you can see, you've got to fight with it a little, or you just undo, 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 undo and just drag your point until the tangency is a little more predictable and then it'll put it in correctly thanks for that autodesk what can i say anyway now that we've got the tangency in we can mess with this shape and we can get it looking something like what we want okay it's going to be very crude i am neither an artist nor a professional but there we go so one which is hot sketch we just finish sketch by clicking over here and that's it and then we can use these um these controls here we're just going to use extrude which just basically means take it from the flat and give it some thickness so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use this arrow and i'm going to drag the thickness up 
and obviously if you want 3d printed then you don't really want it to be that thick you know it doesn't need to be that massive if it's just going to be stuck to your window with tape or something you know it's, it's not going to be huge so again i'm not bothered about the the um the dimensions i'm literally just going to make it thick and now we've got some monstrosity that looks absolutely hideous but that is sketching lines sketching curves and using tangency okay so what i want to do next is what's another good one oh we could do a ghost type shape so if i do sketch again and then on the same plane as that i could i could sketch on like this face if i really wanted to but i don't i just want to sketch next to it and then i'm going to create a ghost now i'm going to start with the ghosts like the top of the ghost's head like that that's just a circle and then i'm going to put a line say like randomly from there and then out this is just ridiculously massive isn't it um i'm actually going to not use a line i'm going to use a spline again because curves are cool right and then we can just continue to click some points round like that and then like that and then like that and then go back up to here and hopefully we'll get somewhere near there we go can i click that green tick oh wow look at all those green things that's horrible right and and that's some kind of bonkers shape there and if i move that circle you can see that it's attached here so again we're going to need some kind of tangency going on because this is just insane now if i click the circle hold down shift and click this line and hit tangency it it has now applied tangency so it runs out of the circle and then just continues into that into the into that uh, into that um, curve now this one's going to be a little weird because we're going to have to like drag it up a bit and then apply the tangency there we go and then we can use the we can use these dots to oh that didn't apply tangency did you see that apply tangency thank you you get the tangency thing on that's better and now we can drag it about a bit so um what i'm going to do now is i'm going to use the trim tool of the scissors and i'm just going to get rid of that and that one constraint i don't care and that will literally give us our ghostly shape and of course if you've got some um some glow in the dark filament like me you you could possibly print these things out yeah that doesn't that doesn't look brilliant it looks absolutely terrible but um yeah by moving this stuff around you might be able to get some kind of shape that's that's kind of all right yeah it's looking a bit like pac-man right so if i finish that sketch and i make that thick by doing extrude and then yeah just some millimeters again what we can see now is we've got some kind of bizarre shape but of course all ghosts need like eyes and a mouth because how are they going to go Woo! if they haven't got a mouth so what i'm going to do is i'm going to sketch but instead of sketch on one of these planes i'm actually going to sketch on the front face of our ghost shape and i'm just going to whack some circles in so there and there and another one like down there and and again that looks absolutely terrible uh, if you wheel the mouse you can zoom in so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to drag these circles about a bit and um and hopefully end up with some kind of some kind of bizarre shape uh, i don't like the circle for the mouth so what i'm going to do i'm going to go back to my spline and i'm just going to just click some stuff you'll notice there that when i clicked on the start point of the spline it automatically applies tangent to it tangency to it so you don't have to add that yourself which is pretty good and then you know you can you can kind of do whatever you want with the ghostly shape okay so we'll finish that sketch and now we've got lines on on a surface which is not great really so what i can do now is i can again click extrude and then i can click that that and that and if i instead of dragging you know to, to make solids if i go the other way it turns red and it automatically switches it over here on the right hand side where i'm pointing with the cursor to a cut now you can you can change that to a manually join but we do actually want a cut and instead of saying okay i want it to be 15.9 thick because you might want it to be parametric you can say the distance um instead of it being a distance you just want it to cut through all so everything so if you can go back into it in the future and you make the ghost thicker then because that's cutting through all you don't have to go back in and mess with the dimensions you know what i mean so that is um 
extrude that tangency curves lines rectangles and stuff and things um, I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying to draw a pumpkin because I know how rubbish I am at drawing but that is literally it so again we've we've used the sketch tool which gives us the sketch menu hand, handily and we've used the extrude tool now one of the things I do want to cover is literally the constraints in the sketch menu so I am literally just going to drag a sketch on here and I'm just going to put a couple of lines I don't know why that's done that go away go, go, go away pressing clicking things and then pressing delete does actually make them go away I'm just going to put just some randomness in here just so that you can see what's going on so if I, no, that that spins the screen around clicking on the cube straightens it up there we go so what you can see I can drag this stuff and I can drag that to the center of the circle undo control Z or I can drag it onto this line of this circle and as I drag it round, you can see that certain things happen like an X is through it right now so that means it's going to be attached to the circle if I drag it up to the point where tangency is going to be applied the tangency thing will automatically be applied when I release the mouse so you can do this stuff just by dragging or you can click stuff and you can hold down shift and click other stuff and it will give you the items up here that it thinks you're trying to do They're like parallel parallel is grayed out because a line cannot be parallel to a circle that's ridiculous it can only be tangent but if I clicked on this line here and held down shift and clicked on this line here you can see we've got a whole bunch of more options so we've got horizontal vertical what horizontal vertical does is if that line is mostly horizontal and I click it it will make it exactly horizontal and if that line is mostly vertical and I, and I click and I click it it'll make it vertical okay pretty cool um, if I click two lines and say parallel it will make those lines parallel and if I try and move them around they will always stay parallel to each other which is pretty nice so if you change their positions they'll be parallel always you can also use shift and click and press the equal button and that means that when you make one longer the other one gets longer as well it doesn't matter what direction it points they'll be the same length which is always very handy now if I put two circles on what we can do is we can hold down control and press equal and the two circles will be the same diameter radius or whatever you want to call it if we select one circle and select the other circle with shift and then press this one which is concentric what it does is it puts the two circles inside of each other and them circles will be always inside of each other so i don't really want to cover any more than that because i mean this is probably already going to be a 20 minute video and these videos aren't the most exciting but that's the sketch tools that's the relations um concentric is pretty good because if you click two points and say it will attach the endpoints just in the same way as dragging the endpoints onto each other does. Now let's just drag this around a bit and try and create a shape. Okay, so we do that. There we go. We've automatically got tangency. We've automatically got some con concentricity going on. We've got some horizontals and we've got some verticals. And I can, of course, finish that sketch and I can extrude that sketch. And I can select certain what we call regions from this sketch to be included in the extrude so if I like turn that one off you can see there and if I turn that one off you can see there what you're going to get which is pretty nice you can create some pretty bonkers shapes just by sketching lines and circles and doing extrudes and just selecting the regions so the more lines we put into this sketch the more regions we're going to get now at the bottom left hand side of the screen here we have like the timeline or the feature tree or the model tree or whatever you want to call it and you can literally roll it back and forwards now I've got a couple of sketches in here and as you can see as we click on things they highlight what they are and if I right click on something and say edit I can now go back in and edit my sketch so I could add another line say like up to there and say finish the sketch and then when I try and extrude it I can just have that bit and that bit you know what I mean so you can create pretty much anything you want just by doing sketches and extrudes now just to blow your minds a little more what we can also do is if I sketch again on this front face and I do a box 
and I do a line over here that would help if that line was vertical really there we go instead of doing an extrude I can do a revolve now what revolve says is what's the profile that is the profile and what is the axis that line is the axis and what it's done is it has completely revolved that box around that line and we've now got some kind of big washery ring type thing we'll use extrudes and revolves in the future to create whatever we want now i don't want this video to go on much longer than this mainly because it's not the most exciting stuff and um, if there's any features you want to see in the future you know put that in the comments let me know um don't put any comments about me, me rubbish drawings of ghosts and witches hats please because i'm not really that interested i know how bad they are uh, but yeah if you want to see about you know combined modifiers and shells and fillets and all that kind of stuff we will cover this stuff in future videos but let me know how you want it how you want it to be driven um we will also be covering 3d printing the stuff as well using the tools make button um and all that kind of stuff and hopefully We'll get on to manufacture and we'll do some CNC stuff with the CNC, um, the 3020 CNC that I picked up a while ago and just didn't show you. So that is pretty much it for now. Um, if you want to know anything else, just let me know. If there's anything that uh, you, you have questions about, kind of like you've got a model and you don't know why it's failing or something like that, just let me know. But that is it. I've been Steve, as usual. Thanks for listening.